dog shows up on screen. And um, secondly, we will be getting this posted. The recording will be posted in um, probably by the end of today. Um, so you can look for that. It'll be on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. But the easier, the easiest way for you to find access to the recorded version will be to go to our website. Third thing is on our website, there is a link there that you can make a donation to. And I um, just want to quickly encourage all of you to do that. Donations that we receive during the Zoomies helps cover our costs. Um, some of our speakers do this voluntarily. Others, this is the way that they make their living. And so any donations that you make during the Zoomie go to help honorariums for our speakers. So we appreciate that greatly. Um, third thing, there is um, an auction that the Scotty Rally is has going on. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, just uh, Scotty Rally Auction, you'll be able to look at what's being posted. Um, thanks to a couple of board members that are on this call, Mary Bauer and Scotty Peterson um, and myself, we've been working extremely hard getting those things together. We still have probably... I don't know, 150 photos yet to post. Um, so just keep tuning in. Um, and uh, unlike what we have done in the past and most organizations do, we are allowing people to start bidding. So if you see a photograph, I mean, a photo of an item that you like, just go ahead and place a bid on it. You don't have to put your name in and say, I'm following. Go ahead and get the bidding started. That would be great. Um, the third thing is, I just want to encourage all of you, if you have a Scottish Terrier in your home, you have an opportunity to make a real impact. And that is by making an appointment with your vet to have blood drawn for your dogs. Um, and if your dogs are going to have a health check in the near future, you can do this at that same time. We're inviting you as a trustee on the on this health trust fund of the Scottish Terrier Club of America um, I'm sort of on a personal mission to try to get people to get their dog's blood samples in that blood bank. The purpose of that bank is so that we have a repository so that we can get samples um, submitted for research studies years ago, or you may have submitted blood samples of your dog to a research study. That blood sample belongs to that researcher or that institution. When the study's done, the blood is simply tossed out. This DNA bank that we're, we've established and we're going on two years now, we have over 550 samples in it. And the purpose of that is so that the Health Trust Fund can solicit researchers and put out requests for proposals. So if you're concerned about Cushing's or you're concerned about why do we have elevated liver enzymes, um, you're concerned about, you know, finding additional information for bladder cancer, et cetera, or lymphoma. That's why that's important for you to put that blood in that blood bank. We'll be looking at all Scotties. It doesn't matter if somebody's a show dog or a rescue dog and we know nothing about them. It doesn't matter if the Scotty's part Scotty or all Scotty. All Scotty DNA matters. So please take advantage of that. Um, at the end of uh, Jody's presentation, I probably will mention this again, um, but you'll also see posts on it on Facebook. You can get a kit by just sending um, your name and address and the number of dogs that you have in your email to HTF, so that's Health Trust Fund, DNA Bank at gmail.com, okay? So those are all my plugs. And um, I am very excited to introduce Jody Hergret Anders Anderson to, to you. She is probably one of my most favorite people in the whole world. She has been doing presentations at the Door County Scotty Rally for years. We haven't had her for a couple of years, but we'll probably bring her back for year number 25 next year. She is one of the best behaviorists I know of and personally has helped me a lot with, um, in particular, saving the, the life of one of my dogs. So I'm going to turn things over to Jody. My kids all look bored laying here because I'm not taking them out for a walk. And I'm sure you guys have the same thing going on in your homes. So go go ahead, Jody. And I've just got to get your screen shared here.
You should be able to bring up your screen then. Jody, are you on mute? Yeah. There you are. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So were you able to see the presentation? No. Okay. So let Do me you have it up on your screen. Put it back up again. Okay. Now, can you see it? No. Okay. I have it up. Hang on one second. Let me just double check one other thing. All participants. Yep, everything's set the way it's supposed to. Okay, so on my end, So I have it. Can you email it to me, Jody, and maybe I can get it up as well? All right. So should I be clicking on share screen? Yes. Okay. All right. So now I'm highlighting my presentation. There we go. It's is that coming. bringing it up? It's coming. There it is. Okay. And then you just want to click on slideshow. I'm doing that. Okay, perfect. Notice how we all stayed calm. Yay. I know. <laughs> At least externally. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I always tell people, I... I never worry about the content of presentations and I give them, I just worry about the electronics. Right. So. <laughs> All right. So good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving of your time. We know your time is valuable and we really appreciate your, your being here. Um, so this morning, our topic is weatherproof training games to keep you and your dog happy. So I was really excited to put this seminar together because it was just so much fun was fun putting it together and fun going through slides and fun shooting some videos for it. So um, someone in chat had asked what the website was for the Door County Scott Scotty Rally. So first I wanna give a shout out to Michelle for sponsoring this um, workshop. This is a um, picture from one of the Scotty rallies. So here's the website and I'll have it at the end as well. Just a little bit, Michelle covered some of this. So Michelle, since your slide doesn't come up, didn't come up, I put this up. Um, so the Scotty Rally has been around since 2000. It's one of the biggest gatherings of Scottish Terriers in the US. They provide financial support for health related research and terrier rescue. And if you would like to make a donation, uh, if you enjoyed this presentation, they would welcome any and all donations and the website is here and I'll put it on at the end as well. Okay, just a really little bit about myself. Um, I've been doing training and behavior full time since 2000. I have a BA in psychology. I have a rescue and sheltering background. I managed the Oshkosh Humane Society for over six years and I still do lots of work with shelters and rescues. I am certified through um, the IAABC and the APDT, which are two worldwide organizations that provide certification and education for trainers and um, behavior professionals. Um, I've also done some competing, agility, obedience, rally, nose work. I've had therapy dogs and I've had over a hundred performance titles. So um, I've been really involved in various areas of the dog world for a long time. 
Um, my <laughs> husband, Dave, and I have three dogs. We have Winston on the left. We have Kira on the right. Winston is a German Shepherd mix. Kira is a German Shepherd. Um, they were both adopted from Echo Dogs White Shepherd Rescue. And I think I saw is Cindy, Cindy Maloney Ralph on here, I think. Shout out to Cindy. She was Winston's foster mom. Um, we also have a cat named Indigo. So our two dogs are rescue dogs and Indigo is a rescue as well. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of different things. Um, and we'll talk about things to do when you're training, kinds of treats, different kinds of toys, um, teaching touch and hand targeting, um, find it, talk about target boards, the shell game and other toys. Um, you know, as I said to Michelle, when you put together a presentation and initially you think, wow, what am I gonna talk about for an hour? And pretty soon it's like, what can't I, what do I have to cut out? So there's a lot of things we won't get to today, but if we have time at the end, we can answer some questions. And if we have extra time, you know, I can go in and pull up some videos and things for us to look at too. So, all right, um, questions. If you have questions during the presentation, go ahead and do so in chat. Michelle's gonna monitor the questions and just let me know if we have a question. Um, try to keep the question specific to that slide or that topic that we're talking about. In the end, we're gonna leave hopefully some time for answering questions and just general questions or anything else, okay? If you have questions afterwards, feel free to contact me. Um, on the um, title page of the slideshow was my email address and my phone number, and you're welcome to reach out to me at any time. All right, so I'm gonna start with like the heaviest part of this talk first. Um, if any of you come from a psychology background, you've heard, probably heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow was um, an important person in the world of psychology. And so he came up for humans with this list of needs. Based on that, um, this is an application for dogs. So if we look at hierarchy of, of dog needs, the very foundation is biological needs. Um, and you guys can obviously go back and look at that. There's a lot more information on the slide that we won't get to. But basic biological needs are just basic things, the foundation of what every dog needs. Within that, on the second row, is sufficient exercise. Um, moving up, we have emotional needs. And within that is consistency and benevolent leadership. Um, leadership has replaced the term of dominance. Now a lot of us, you know, talk about just being good leaders rather than, you know, 30 years ago, people talked about you had to be dominant over your dog. So now we talk about leadership and, um, and relationship. Above that are social needs. So bonding with people and dogs and play. Um, one thing that's interesting to know about play is if, if dogs are sufficiently stressed, like in a shelter environment, or if you're fostering a dog or um, at a veterinary clinic, the need, the desire to play will leave before the desire to eat. So you may have a dog that will um, take treats and training and work with them, but they won't engage in play. Um, so that's always an interesting awareness to me if someone says, oh, my dog's really playful, but then they get in a setting and they're really not, that can indicate that there's some stress going on. Um, so social needs are important too. Um, next up, force-free training needs, uh, do no harm management and learning. We'll talk about that when we talk about training. Um, I really like to think of training as a game, whether you're teaching your dog to walk nicely on a loose leash, whether you're working on recall, whether you're working on teaching them to high five. To me, I try to think of it as all games that we play and things that they learn. So they stay enthusiastic and, and we do as well and we make it fun. The other night I was at a class doing a rally course and practicing and I'm about to start rally competition with Kira, but I gave her a down command and she stood there and looked at me and I joked and said, I have never heard that word in my life. <laughs> and I just laughed about it. you know. And some people might get upset and just say, you need to down because I asked you to, but we're in a strange environment you know, with a lot of distractions. And she looked at me like, I've never heard down in my life. And I know she does, but 
Um, I really like to think of things as a game and, and really cooperative um, where we work together to learn things, okay? On the very top of the pyramid is cognitive needs. So choice, novelty, problem solving. Um, ideally, you know, as we're working with our dogs, we want their buy-in. We want them playing with us and working with us. We want to provide them with different experiences and we want to give them a chance to solve problems. Most of our breeds were bred for working functions and jobs. So, and that can involve a lot of thinking, problem solving. So if we can give our dogs some of those things um, at home, that can be super helpful and they're happier dogs for it. So this is a slide you can go through later, but I just really wanted to share that um, with you. And um, yeah, so that'll be the heaviest part of what we talk about today. So let's talk about weather, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's rainy, no matter where you live, we have times where we really can't do outdoor things with our dogs. Um, maybe it's even you had shoulder surgery and you're limited in what you can do. So you're looking for other exercises. Um, I've had a recent bout with plantar fasciitis and my I can't get into a podiatrist for six weeks. It is really, really frustrating for me because I'm used to walking anywhere up to like three miles a day with my, do my dogs and being super active. So I've been doing more things. My husband's doing more walking and I'm trying to stay off my feet a little bit. So we can have physical challenges, but we can also have weather challenges, hot, cold, rainy. So here are some of the things that I hear about from clients. Um, in winter time, I always get a slew of calls from clients like, oh my God, Jody, my dog is driving me crazy or he's doing this and this and this and this. And when I ask, what kind of exercise is he getting or how much training are you doing? And people kind of go, oh. So these are some of the things that you can just see as a result of lack of stimulation, whether it's physical or mental. So boredom, chewing, way too much energy, um, attention seeking, stealing. You know, people will tell me my dog is stealing like uh, dishcloths and pillows off the bed and anything that they can get their little mouth on. Um, you'll see more mouthy behavior, more barking, more vocalizing. Um, some dogs will start digging a carpet, digging at things, calling you for attention. Hey, mom, get off the computer. Let's do something. Hey, dad, get off the recliner. Let's do something. Um, they may jump on other pets. If you have a young dog, they may start jumping on your senior or chasing the cat at a higher level. Um, some dogs could get into... Um, what are called uh, compulsive behaviors or stereotypic behaviors, tail chasing and spinning, light chasing. Um, those are often stress related and stress can come from not having enough stimulation or things to do. Um, some dogs will take off. Darn it, I don't have enough outlets for my energy, so I'm going to make my own ability to run by running out the door and cruising around the house. Um, some people may see potty training lapses. Um, more as a result of stress, if especially if the dog is uncomfortable going outside in rain or snow. So there are all kinds of things that can pop up. Um, so the challenge for us then, especially with younger dogs, becomes how can I engage my dog and give them, um, you know, some things to do, some things to keep them busy, things to keep them engaged and challenged. Okay. All right, so when we're working, whether we're training or playing with our dog, here are just a couple of things that I really encourage people to do. Um, laugh and have a good time. Again, if we're playing games, um, you know, if we're working on tricks, have a good time. Enjoy it. Go into it with a smile on your face. Um, again, the other night at this rally class I was at, the instructor was like, I want to see everybody doing lots of smiling. I want to hear lots of laughter, lots of good times. So we want to have fun with our dogs. Um, if you have multiple pets, I really encourage you to work them separately and then together, especially if you're teaching something new. And this is just a general guideline for multiple dog households. Anything new that you're teaching, um, work with your dog separately and then put them together. Maybe, you know, if you have resource guarding issues, um, and treats aren't necessarily safe to have around your dogs, then you may do separate training with them rather than working together. Um, with young dogs, if you have a senior dog who knows something, um, they can be really helpful as far as helping you teach a behavior to a young dog. 
Um, I really encourage people with multiple dogs to do separate things with their dogs every day. Um, that can be just a couple of minutes. One's inside, one's outside. One's crated, one's loose. One's in the car, one's in the house. One's in the fence, one's outside of the house. That way they get used to working separately and they don't have such a hard time um, if they are separated. Um, sometimes with clients, we'll have uh, two people working with a dog on a leash um, across the room. So, but in general, if you're, especially if you're teaching something new, work them separately and then together. Really be generous with your praise and your treats. You know, our dogs, bless their hearts, are willing to play with us and learn from us and do things with us. So be generous and really let them know you love it when they're working with you. Uh, try to be consistent among your family members. So um, make sure if you're using hand signals that everyone's on the same page with your verbal cue and your hand signal. Families with kids, you can even post a list. So make a list, sit equals sit, down equals lay down, off equals don't jump. Um, you can post things. I have some families who make little um, diagrams and post those, especially for kids. The more consistent you are as an individual and as a family, the more consistent your dog will be. Share what you've done with other family members. Um, you know, get everybody on the same page and have fun. I'll even encourage families to like stand in a circle and everybody take a turn. And that way you can find out if you're being inconsistent um, or see if the dog responds better. What are you doing that I'm not doing? So I remember one time I was watching my husband work my dog in weave poles, one of my dogs in weave poles, and my dog was flying through the weaves. And I was watching him going, what is he doing that I'm not doing? Because my dog is, he's going through much faster than with me. And what I realized was my husband didn't really care. <laughs> I care because I was competing, but he was relaxed. He was loose. There was no agenda. They were just out there having a great time. And I'm, th you know, thinking of this in terms of competition. So sometimes when you share things with other family members, um, you're able to say, what are you doing that I'm not doing? You're getting a better response than I am. How can I, how can I get that? So really use each other and think of yourselves as, you know, cooperating together for training your dog. Um, the next one is really important to me. If your dog is not understanding the game, make it easier. Sometimes, you know, when we're working, we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and the dog doesn't get it and they shut down and then learning isn't fun. So I tell my clients and my students all the time, part of my job as a trainer is to help you start to think like a trainer. And a big piece of that is breaking behavior into smaller pieces if you need to. So yes, maybe our end goal is to teach a dog a behavior. For some dogs, that may be one piece. For some dogs, that might be 10 pieces. For some dogs, for an individual dog, it might be one piece for sit, but 15 pieces for down. So if your dog isn't getting something, start thinking, how can I make it easier for them and break it into pieces, okay? Um, especially if it's something new. I think is we all have things, we all have dogs that we think, oh my gosh, I hope I never have to work so hard on this, this, or this. And then we have dogs that are like, wow, he picked that up really easy, okay? Um, I often think of this in making it easier. My husband is a heating cooling contractor and I'm not mechanical at all. So when he's explaining something mechanical, I'll be like, stop. Can you just repeat that? Or can you say that again? Or could you show me more slowly? That is not my wheelhouse. It, it does, I don't comprehend that really well. I need to have, for him, it's just like, boom, here's what you do. For me, I need it broken down into a lot of other pieces for it to make sense. Um, so, I, and I know it can be that way for our dogs sometimes too. Um, last piece, know, know your dog and if there are limitations or exclusions. So I'm gonna give you exercises and games and things to play today. Um, you know, you may need to modify that for your dog or that may be an exercise that they can't do. Um, if dogs have resource guarding issues or food guarding issues, sometimes we have to tweak things or do them differently or control things a little bit more. Or that may be a situation, as I said, where you can't work with your pets um, together in the same room. They have to be worked. Um, together. Okay. All right. So 
Um, there's more that we can do than this, but these are just some general things that I want you to think about um, today. Oops. Okay, let's talk for a second about treats before we start this. Whoops. Okay. Can everybody still see that? Yeah, okay. So these are just some of my favorite treats. Whoops. Okay, sorry. Uh, when you're training and working, look for treats that come in a small size or that you can cut and break into small pieces. The smaller the dog, the more important this is. You know, I tell my clients with, um, you know, like little Yorkies, I don't want your dog to look like a watermelon with legs in a month when we get together again. So, you know, if you're training, take things, take your treats and cut them into small pieces. I really try to buy products that are made in the U.S. And I might be preaching to the choir here, but I try to do that with treats and chews. Most dogs prefer meaty or cheesy type treats, but the value of the treat is defined by your dog. And some dogs really love vegetables. I have clients that say, my dog loves green beans. Michelle, you shared with me that your dog loves uh, carrots. So um, so the, the value of the treat is defined by your dog. Um, I like to have a variety of treats, lower value and higher value, and use both, especially if it's something new or hard or a distracting setting. Bring out those high value treats. Um, you can use the lower value treats or even food for things that are known well, things that are easier, situations that are less distracting. You guys, I am amazed, especially with things like recall, outdoor exercises. Um, Sometimes we'll have a dog that's not really responding and I'll say, Let, can I just try something? And I use a different treat. Oh my God, do we have their attention? And so that can bring home to va the value to me of you know a $20 paycheck versus a dollar paycheck for some dogs. Um, some dogs will work really hard even for kibble. A lot of dogs won't. So mix and match your treats and have a variety of things. Okay. And um, I I use I use um, more dry food for puzzles and toys, and treats more for training. Uh, you can also use toys too, and toys can be high value or low value too. So I should have put that in here as well, because you can use a toy for a reward as well. In fact, for some toys, dogs toys actually trump treats. All right, so here are some of the treats that I really like, um, and I have a video too going around these. Um, on the left, um, starting on the bottom, those are fantastic dog chews. They have these little treats, turkey, rabbit, beef. Um, I like to have some treats that are novel proteins, especially if dogs are have allergies. And by the way, guys, I have all these um, all of these treat companies listed on the end of the presentation on a resource page. Behind that is Brandon Meats. For those of you in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin, Brandon Meats has treats. They are about 40 minutes from Oshkosh. They have chicken hearts, beef heart, um, beef liver, pork heart, and beef heart. Um, they're a small company. You can also order off their website. It's brandonmeatsithink.com. They have really great prices, local products, really, really fresh. I, I sell their some of their treats. And often, you know, I may call in for an order and they're like, well, we'll be making those on Monday and we'll ship them on Tuesday or you can pick them up on Wednesday. So I really like Brandon Meats if you if you like whole or, you know, like a freeze dried product. Um, they're re reasonably priced and a good quality product and you can break them the beef heart and chicken hearts, especially cut up really nicely into pieces. Going to the next row, we have West Paw treats. I really like a lot of the West Paw treats. They're um, made in the US in Montana. One of my favorites is um, in the upper right hand corner is bison lung. Um, they have bison heart, bison lung, beef heart, beef lung, lots of different treats. The bison lung is nice. First of all, lung is really lightweight. So you get a lot of product in the bag. Um, liver is heavier, so you'll get less liver than you will get um, lung. Um, 
but you can break it up into small pieces. It tends to be really high value. It's it's nice and um, airy for your dogs and it's a novel protein. So the Westpaw treats I really like a lot. Westpaw also has a product called a creamy dog treat, which I don't have here. Um, it, they have pumpkin and liver. They have a couple different flavors and it's a creamy treat that you can use in Kongs or other toys that we'll talk about. Um, and that, again, that's a really nice product. I like it better than Kong stuffing paste, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit too, but it's Westpaw creamy dog treat. It comes in a little, um, it looks like a toothpaste tube and you can squeeze it out. Um, I use it at vet clinics, anything where you want like a spreadable treat. Down below that is Happy Howie's Treat Rolls. If you haven't used Happy Howie's Treat Rolls, um, check them out. They come in a roll um, and you can see they come in a couple different sizes, up to two pounds. Um, they're made in Michigan. It's a family owned company, a small business. Um, they they come in in that package. Um, below I have a, a small container with some cut up. What I love about Happy Howie's is it's moist, but it's not slimy. It freezes beautifully. Um, so even for small dogs, one of the challenges with some of those rolled treats is if you cut them in tiny pieces, you just end up with crumbles. But the Happy Howie's has nice texture. Um, they do say right on the label, um, use within two weeks of opening it because it's a meat product. So unopened, you can keep it on your shelf. Once it's opened, you have to use it within two weeks. But what I do is get a roll, cut it up into pieces and throw it in those little containers and freeze it. And it freezes beautifully. So if you haven't tried Happy Howie's, try it. They have uh, beef, lamb, and turkey are the three flavors. The turkey is a little bit drier than the beef or the lamb, um, but they're all a really nice, really nice product. And you get a lot of treats. So, um, the wholesale on that on this or the retail on this roll is about six dollars. And I'll get well like three to four of these size containers. You get more treats than you think you will out of it. So if you haven't tried Happy Howie's, do so. Um I used to like the natural balance food roll, but they changed their formula and it's more crumbly now. So this is my go-to treat if I want a semi-moist treat that's relatively healthy. Um, so going down to this middle one, Vital Essentials, uh, there, um, they have some freeze dried products. This one is called Rabbit Bites. And these come in small, pretty small little niblets, but it's a freeze dried product in rabbit. Up to the right of that, um, this is a Old Wisconsin Snack Bites. So this is not gonna be a super healthy treat. Old Wisconsin is a, a sausage. It's really good sausage. We'll be having some tonight for the Packer game. But they come in these little snack bites that are maybe an inch long. Um, they cut up really nicely. If you want like a super high value treat, the tur they have turkey too, which is a little less greasy than the beef. So they come in a couple different variations. Um, that also freezes well, but it has a little bit longer shelf life. So I like those snack bites if I'm looking for something smelly, something really high value, maybe a novel treat. Those, those cut up really nicely too. Even for a little dog, you can cut them really small without them crumbling. So, and those are, you know, I don't know those of you from out of state, if you get old Wisconsin, but you might have something similar. Um, below that is string cheese. You know, Wisconsin dogs love cheese. I like string cheese. It's a little bit lower in fat. Um, plus I can have a snack too. <laughs> It's not uncommon if I'm training the dogs to be like, all right, you get half and I get half if we're using string cheese. Um, and below that are from Crunchy O's. I really like these a lot as a, um, like a biscuity type treat. Um, the uh, from is right here in Wisconsin. It's made, they're made in Mequon. They come in different flavors. They're in a, like a little, it looks like a little tire, but they're tiny. They break up really nicely. And they're not as crumbly as some other crunchy treats. So um, that's one of my other favorite treats. All right, so I'm just gonna do a video that's just kind of a slow pan of all of these treats. 
So there are the rabbit bites, fantastic dog chews, Brandon meats, beef liver, pig liver. On the back is beef heart. So this is um, beef and bison heart, bison lung, beef liver, and beef heart. And here's the happy howies. Mm -hmm. There you can see those little tiny pieces and how it's not very crumbly. The vital essential rabbit bites. Old Wisconsin. Those of you from Wisconsin, Sargento is my favorite string cheese. Um, I like those little separate packets. Um, I find that they get, I'm in conflict over this because from a sustainability set aspect, it's not the most efficient thing to have those tiny little string cheese packets. But I find that if you buy the packets of string cheese where there's like six or 10 or 12 pieces, they get moldy faster and they get more of a tacky texture. So um, I like those little separate snack packages and Sargento is my favorite as far as just having nice um, texture. Okay, anybody have any questions yet? Okay, and these are just a sampling of traits that are out there. These are just some of the things that I use most frequently um, and that I like and that dogs seem to like, which is the ultimate um, information. Whoops. Okay, so um, we are going to be doing some, this is gonna be part lecture and part participation. And I'm gonna sprinkle four different exercises throughout this presentation. And the first one, and what I'm gonna do is kind of describe it. Then I'm gonna show you a video of it. And then we're going to um, have everybody try and practice this at home if you want to. So if you want to participate, have some treats with you, have your dog with you. Um, you might wanna grab a leash. And if you have other pets, you might want to put them away. So the first game we're going to play is called Find It. The goal for us is to teach our dogs to locate a treat that we've thrown for them. When you do this, you want to start with easily visible, smellier, bigger parts of a treat. Some dogs pick this up really fast. Some dogs have a harder time. I like to start inside but ultimately you can do this outside and this is a blast to do outside too. Um, so look at the background that you have. And so if your carpet is brown, you know, you might wanna use like a lighter white color treat or a darker colored treat. Um, and as I said, I like to go with smellier treats as a starting point too. When you do this, ideally you start off leash. You can do it on leash if your dog is really distractible and you wanna start with a really, really short distance. Um, you're gonna to toss the treat out and just say, find it in a really happy voice. They're probably gonna be happy to go get it. As you work on this, you're gonna gradually, you can increase the distance and complexity. You can toss um, <clears throat> farther away. You can start to toss something behind an object. You can put them in um, different rooms or you can hide treats in a location that your dog can't see, like around a corner or completely in another room. So we're gonna start with something just really basic today, but you can make this really complex in gradual steps. So I start with a short distance, then I do a longer distance, then maybe I'll do just around a corner so they can't see it, but then they have to sniff and find it. Um, then I may go a little bit farther or instead of out in the open, I might put it next to a piece of furniture. So that's kind of describing how you might um, make it a little more complex. You can do this inside or outside on a long line. You can add a recall cue after your dog has found the treat. Um, so then you get a chance to work on come. So if you toss a treat, a ton of dogs will go grab their treat and then they come back to you like, do it again. So. As long as they're doing that, let's make that into a come moment and reward them for coming back. Um, one of the things I'm a huge, I have a lot of games that I play to teach dogs to come. And this is one of my favorites when we're working on recall is the find it game because a lot of dogs really love it. This can be a great game. Those of you who foster or if you have a shy dog, 
This is one of my favorite games to start to play with shy dogs um, or dogs who are nervous with people to start to teach them to have fun and engaging with people because we're not touching them. The pressure is off when they get to go find the treat. So they get to go find the treat and then they come back to us, but yet being around us is a lot of fun. So this is one of my go-to games. If people have a dog that hasn't done any training or they've had a lot of um, punishment in their training and they're not um, very confident or very enthused about training, or if they're under socialized or mill dogs, because it really starts to teach them that training can be fun, engaging with you can be fun, because it really, really takes the pressure off. And again, going back to this, if you toss the treat out like one to two feet and your dog doesn't get it, um, you can do try a smellier treat, a bigger treat, or you can just even point it out, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you a slide or a, just a short video of working on this and then we'll play with your dogs. And I think when we play with your dogs, Michelle's gonna unmute you. Um, so Michelle, be when we do this, you're gonna unmute everybody and we're gonna go back to the screen so we can kind of see each other practicing. Is that what's gonna happen? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's just watch a short video. Um, Full disclosure, in this video, I'm working with my dog and my cat. Our cat, Indigo, is like a dog in a cat body. If any of you have been on my personal page or on my business page, um, video, Indigo is like a dog in a cat body. So as soon as we pull stuff out, he he's right in there like, I'm going to train. Um, he does tricks. He does agility. Um, he does high five. He does He does all kinds of tricks. Um, so he makes an appearance in this video, and as long as he shows up, I'm training him too. All right. All right, so here's Kira. So I've got a treat. I'm using string cheese because it's lighter colored on my brown carpet, and I just toss out a short distance. And she comes right back. You can see Indigo on the right saying, can I play too? He knows this game too. So now I'm gonna just try it a little bit farther for Kira. She comes back. I hold my hand out, give her a treat. Now I'm gonna to toss it in another direction. It becomes a new game in a different direction. She comes back. This time I ask her for a sit. We're gonna mix this up. Indigo comes back and he gives me a sit too. This time I call Kira to come, she gets a treat. You can see how engaged she is and she wants to come right back because I'm gonna throw it again. And there's Indigo coming back. So you can play this game with cats too if you have a food motivated cat. Kira's three years old now. She and Indigo have a really great relationship. And they've kind of learned that they can be in the same area and play together and they both get a turn. Um, some dogs wouldn't nice. ignore the cat like Indigo is, but we've been working on that in the two years we've had her. Okay, so just a couple of things to note about that video. I did probably 10 or 15 reps of that in different directions at different distances. My voice was upbeat and fun. Kira looked engaged. She kept coming back, coming back. So she was having a good time. Um, depending on your dogs, some dogs kind of check out a little earlier. Some dogs do better with um, like one or two short sessions or, you know, I'm sorry, fewer short sessions versus a longer session. Okay. So the key with this is start at a short distance, increase the distance. If your dog is totally confused and some dogs are, they look at you like, where did it go? You can go ahead and just point it out, you know, put your finger down, there it is, find it. Really make it easy for them so they're fun. And some dogs really, even though the treat's not that far away, will be um, a little bit confused. Okay, any questions? Come on, girl. So go ahead and if you're able to, you can kind of point the screen down so we can see your dogs. Oh, I see she's in her hand already. 
So let's go ahead and try this. Okay. So now, Michelle, should I just keep my um, I just keep my video up where it is? Or yes. Should I... Okay. I think so. Yeah. Find it. Yay. Yay. Nice it. job. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. Um, do you say come when they come back to train them to come? Okay. You sure can. You can either reward it for coming back or you can put it on cue mm -hmm. um, and just say come. Nice job. All right. Look at that. Yeah. That's a great question. Great question, Scotty. Mm -hmm. Oh, is your name not Scotty just for Scotty or is your name Scotty? My name is Scotty. Okay, <laughs> that's what it came up at. Also, oh. I have a I have a 14 and a half year old girl. Um, so if you could kind of work in some elder dog, really <laughs> elder dog, not just senior, but elderly dog suggestions periodically oh, we will and she could do this you might uh, for sure do it on like a rug and use really really treats so that a little nose but this is one that you can dog at a short a senior dog at just a short distance yeah because she's losing her hearing and her sight so smell is yeah important well, that sausage okay. or like a happy howie's type treat or you have that that she Oops. really recognizes the light. Here. 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 Find it. Find it. Yeah. She's yeah, for sure with a senior I'd be doing it on a rug. I think it went in your shoe. Here. There it is. It's under your shoe. No, sure. It's under your shoe in the closet. Go find it. <laughs> so one thing I'll mention, I see someone working on a hardwood floor. If you have a dog who's nervous about hardwood floors, have a do it on an area rug or in a carpeted area, or have a big mat that you roll out to be trained on. Lots of clients that do that. Okay, we're working on a hardwood floor. But yeah. she's moving. She's moving kind of slow um, because she's got a surgery snuggie on. She just had surgery. Okay. So yeah. So for sure, then I would work on a rug. Uh, yoga mats can work good. Girl. Too. Good girl. Oh, nice job. I love all that praise that I'm hearing. Good girly girl. Here, come see mama. Is that was enough? Love you. Nice job. Yeah. One more. One more. This is the baby girl. Ready? Ready, Maddie? Okay. I'll put it up for now. <laughs> nice job. Love you. Right. Michelle, are you still there? I am. Okay. So I think that was a good that was a good start. So let's go ahead and let's go. Hey, that's it. There we go. Here. Good girl. Good girl. All right. So are we muted, Michelle? I'm working on it. So I was gonna ask, are there any questions before we go to full on mute? Oh yeah. Um my little dog, she gets tired of the same thing really quickly, treat wise. It's really kind of hard to keep ahead of her on that. Okay. Yeah. So definitely mix that, mix it up. Don't be afraid to try some different things, you know, to see if some have higher value than others. Oh, there's Paisley. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so it's hard when you have a dog that's either not that food motivated, toys can be used for this, or just really experiment and just see. And, you know, things that sound creepy, Scotty, like chicken hearts, 
I have, you know, sometimes things that are really creepy, we found out, find out our dogs really like it. Tripe is another one that some dogs really like. Salmon. I can't even have tripe treat. Smell just gags me. But for some dogs, that's just a really high value thing. So don't be afraid to experiment, even if it seems kind of creepy to you. Okay. Any other questions before we mute? And we're gonna we're gonna do a couple more exercises too. If I could ask okay. everybody just to mute yours because. I'm having a brain fart and now I can't find where I did it before. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called self-regulation. Well, it, we can non-mute and I can just keep going too, Michelle. Yeah, perfect. If you want to just leave it like that. Okay. Okay. As long as everybody promises that you won't turn on heavy metal music or anything like that in the background, we should be good. So this will kind of date me, but I'll, one time this, I'll, well, I'll tell it as a quick aside. So I do a lot of in-home behavior appointments and uh, sometimes I listen to the radio on my way there. So I, I was going to a client's house and I had the radio on and Billy Idol's White Wedding was on. And so I pull up into the driveway and I'm like computing my mileage and you know getting organized. And I'm just like still racking out to Billy Idol. And at that moment, my client comes up and knocks on the window, like, we're all ready for you. I was so embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> that I'm sitting there with Billy Idol cranked in my car. So I guess if someone wants to play uh, heavy metal in the background, that's okay. But all right, let's talk about food dispensing toys. So I really love using food dispensing toys um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, it well, we'll talk about what they're good for in a moment, but I just want to point out some of the ones that that I have on the counter or some different ways that you can take food. Um, yeah. These are toys that I would use my dog's dry food in. You can use treats, um, but I like to use dry food. So the first thing we have up here on the left is a snuffle ball. You can see you, there are snuffle balls, snuffle mats. These are toys that you can put treats into and your dogs have to roll them around and get the treats out. Um, not all dogs can use those. You know, if you're worried that they're going to rip fabric apart, it might may not be for them. But some dogs just really love them. Below that, um, this isn't necessarily a toy, but I love to throw out some ideas that are inexpensive and homemade that you can do, that you don't always have to just go out and buy things. Um, you can take a muffin tin with tennis balls, and the dogs have to pull or push the tennis balls out and get the food underneath it. Um, this is a, a licky mat. There are a lot of different versions of licky mats. You can use um, you can use canned food for that, pate style canned food, peanut butter, yogurt, um, creamy dog mm -hmm. treat, all those kinds of things. The the um, snuffle mats or the the licky mats can be great for veterinary visits to uh, nail trims, any husbandry type things that you're trying to do to your dog. Those are nice. Um, this is called a kibble nibble. This is by PetSafe. It's one of my favorite food dispensing toys. The food comes out the end here. Um, a lot of dogs like it because the treats kind of, or food rattles around and they can hear it inside. This is Kong stuffing paste. Um, it's kind of like squeeze cheese or easy cheese. Um, it squeezes out, comes in different flavors. You can use it to kind of like goop drier treats together and put into a Kong or a topple, which I'll show you. This is West Paw Topple. This is one of my absolute favorite um, toys for food dispensing. They come now in three different sizes. This is an extra large, large, and small. Uh, for a Scotty, you'd probably go small, or the large is, I don't know, I'd have to measure it, maybe four inches in diameter. You can see they have these little holes here. You can plug those with a piece of string cheese or carrot, or I happen to know that a from O fits perfectly into that hole usually as a plug. You also notice that they have, um, uh, it looks like, what is the word for that? Um, where you can screw something together. So you can put the small one and screw it into the next size one or this one into the tall one and make it into like a self-contained food dispensing toy. The next one is a um, 
Pet Safe Twist and Treat. This is one of my favorite toys to use for new dogs. Um, it's my absolute favorite toy to use for foster dogs or dogs that are shy or dogs that, are don't, that don't know how to engage with the toy um, because you can adjust them. So this is, if you haven't used one of these, you can spin it apart and they actually come completely apart this is the largest size, but I use that so you could see it. They come completely apart, but you can adjust it. So if you have a dog like that has never, uh, playing with toys is a learned behavior, it's not innate. So your shelter dogs, your rescue dogs, if they've never engaged with the toy, they don't know what to do. And sometimes they're afraid of them. I love this toy because you can make it so easy. You can start with like half of the toy and put some treats in it and to teach them engage or you can start to put it together and make it super easy. So it starts to teach dogs that they can enjoy or engage with toys. If you have a shy dog that lacks confidence, you know, it can be a great confidence builder and it, it just, it's so easy. They, they can't help but succeed. So that's the pet safe twist, uh, twist and treat. Um, this is the um, pet safe magic mushroom. This is a harder food dispensing toy. This is not one that you want to start with, but if your dog already knows them, it can be a, a harder version because they have to get the toys out of this um, chamber through an opening and then out of the top of the mushroom. And Kongs, a lot of you are probably familiar with, those can be um, good for stuffing or putting food in. We'll talk in a second about different things you can do. So what are the benefits of food, dis uh, food dispensing toys? They teach dogs to eat more slowly. They can think, problem solve, and learn. They keep you busy for a while. You can use them inside or outside. Shy dogs are more confident. Um, these can be super helpful for dogs that just wanna inhale their food. It teaches them to slow down and just go at an easier pace, okay? So I talked a second ago about the West Paw Topple. It's my favorite one of my favorite toys for feeding meals in. You can see they have these little fins inside. What I don't like about Kongs is the op opening is smaller and some dogs have a hard time getting their tongue in and they just give up. So with the, the topple, it's still a challenge to get their tongue in, um, but uh, it's a wider opening. Um, I will say this rubber is not as hard as the Kongs. So this is definitely a toy you put down and then pick up. Um, and you don't, you wouldn't leave it out unsupervised. Um, you can see in this toy on the right that I have like a little piece of string cheese in the plug. On the left is just um, a concoction that I made for my dogs. I've got some deli ham, some asparagus that was steamed. I threw in some yogurt, some pumpkin, a little bit of broccoli, made it into a big paste. Uh, plain Greek yogurt can be great for, you know, combining um, food, you can also use pate style canned food. So I made this all into a paste, put it into the cobbles, put a little thin covering of cheese spread on the top and stuck some from O's on the top of that. So that could be like a snack on a colder rainy day that'll keep your dog busy for a while. And on the right is Winston enjoying his topple. So, you know, the sky's the limit on the things you can put in these toys. You can use dry kibble, but I like uh, kibble with some raw food, kibble with some pate style canned food, just enough to make it into a paste or concoctions like this, depending on what your dog likes. Okay, a couple of short videos. Um, this is um, Kira with just 12 tennis balls in a um, muffin tin. And inside I have some of her dry dog food. So for a small dog, you could use smaller balls um, and like a, a smaller muffin tin, like those little petite muffin tins, but these are bigger openings. Does she ever tip the whole tin over? Um, she hasn't, but you know, if you do, good question, Michelle, because some dogs might just say, I'm going to dump the whole tin over. You can just hold it in place too, as long as they don't have resource guarding issues. Okay. And this is uh, one of our dogs who's passed. This is Maya with a kibble nibble, which we talked about. So I mentioned how it kind of rattles. 
One thing about the kibble nibble, it has fins on the end. Look at the size of what you're putting in there. And if you need to, you can take a scissors and trim the fins on the end where the food comes out to make it dispense easier. If you need to, if you've got big food. Okay. All right. Um, cats like them too. There, if you have cats who are food motivated, this is just a slide of some really great um, fe feeders. These are food dispensing toys. This one is called a hunting feeder. It comes with these little mice and you adjust the opening and you can hide them for your cat to find. Um, this is a, 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 pu a food puzzle. So if you have a cat or if you had like a really tiny dog, like a um, like a Morky, like a little seven pound dog, you could get by with uh, one of these cat puzzles. And on this one, they have to move the opening. Okay. All right. Any questions on food dispensing toys? All right. So next game we're going to play. Um, this will be another group exercise. This is called the shell game. So this, this is played with plastic cups. So I use like plastic solo cups. So on the left is, this is like a 12 ounce. This is a smaller size cup. This is a big cup that I have cut down for a little tiny dog. This is a one that I cut for a dog that was really shy and fearful and not too sure about this. And we were using it as a confidence builder. Um, this could also be something that you use like for a cat if you're trying to teach them to do this. So, um, so what we do is we start, and I call it the shell game because if you've ever seen like they put things under, it, it's like a magic trick and you, you move it around and you have to guess which one it's under. So we don't actually use shells. But what we're gonna do is start with one plastic cup. And so those of you who have a cup, go ahead and grab those if you don't and wanna go grab something. You could use, um, you know, plastic Tupperware type containers too. Um, but these are just light, they're easy to tip over. So we're gonna start with one cup. You're gonna put a treat under it, show it to your dog, show them the treat, put the cup over, lift it, put it back down again. I have a short video of this. And they may start nudging the cup or pawing at the cup or they may tip it over. And you're gonna do that a couple of times. If they seem to get it, then you can add a second cup. One has a treat, one doesn't. So they have to sniff and figure out which one has the treat and who doesn't. Um, this is a nice game for older dogs too, if you do it on a rug, because they don't have to move that far, it's not really active. And you can make it super easy and put it right in front of them um, if they're even laying down. So you could make this super easy, okay? So if they get it, then we'll add a second cup, then we'll add a third cup. So here's a short video just of the beginning of this. Okay, so I have Kira, I've got my cup. I show it to her, I put it down, show it to her twice, and I say, find it. You can see that she got that treat. Yay, good girl. So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it with one cup a couple of times so they understand the game. So some dogs tip it over, some dogs paw it, some dogs shuffle it around like Kira did and then just hoover up the treat. Okay, so now I, she sees which one I put it under, but I kind of shuffle the cups around. You might forget to put one in the cup. Now, you can also do this um, if you think there's no way my dog will sit there while I'm putting these cups down, they're gonna be all over me. You can have a second person with a leash or tether them to a couch or something. If you think that they won't give you space <laughs> to put the cups down. 
Okay, so now I'm doing three. There goes indigo. Okay. And I'm going to do, put one treat in there. And again, you want to use smellier treats, especially when you're starting out with this. Okay, so now she's got three. My husband walks in the house. <laughs> so she's distracted. Okay. And now I'm just going to put up four. So again, with this, if they're not getting it, make it easier. Show them the treat. If they don't get four, go back to three. We want them to have fun and we want this to be a confidence builder. Okay. All right. Any questions before we start? All right. Well, I should ask first, did anybody bring cups? Is anybody going to do this? If not, then we'll just go on to the next slide. Jody, I have a quick question. Yes. Can you, I've started with my little one, my little Yorkie, instead mm -hmm. of using cups, I do like, which hand? Oh, that's a whole different game. Sure. You oh. can do that. Yeah. It's, it's the same. Okay. It's the same concept. And if you have multiple people, you can line up four hands. So I call that, that one is an oh. audio presentation. I call that which one. Which Where one? Okay. One and hold it down and they have to pick the treat and then you show it to them. Yeah. Cause I kind of show her my hand. Yep. And then I kind of do like, which one? Yeah. And a more advanced version of that would be like having a single person help and adding three hands or four hands. And, and, and what about hiding things like under um, like a blanket or something and have her, having them try to find which? Yeah, that goes back to the find it game that we played. And that would be a more advanced version of the finding. Okay. Good. Yeah. I love Great. that. Um. I love playing that which one game like with kids or grandkids and having them line up. It's a really, really fun game for kids. Thank you. All right, looks like we've got a couple of people starting this. There you go. So you can see um, Paisley was not really sure what she was doing. So Cindy just kind of picked up the cup. But usually, I'll, I'll tell you guys, usually the hardest part of this is the first cup and understanding what the game is. And once they get the first, the idea down, then you can expand pretty quickly. And Paisley's like, I'm going to throw out a shake. I'm going to throw out a down. I don't know what you want, mom. So I'm just going to start offering other behaviors that I know how to do. And so, you know, if they if they put out those other behaviors, you just um, just keep going. Nice. All right. Nice job. So again, if they're not getting it, make it easier. Show it to them, use a smellier treat. I have some dogs that I might put the treat half under the cup, half out of the cup. So that's another way you can make it easier if they're not understanding or like cutting that little um, opening so they can see it and smell it. Those are all ways you can make it easier. Okay, all right, nice job. So that's a good start. All right, let's go on to the next exercise. Thanks everybody for showing us what you're doing and thanks Arnell for sharing that game that you're playing too. So here's more advanced. So on the left, I have a slide with four cups that say F. F means food. <laughs> if I put out, like I've got um, 12 cups set up here, 
Um, I'm not going to always remember which ones have food underneath it. So I'll take some of the cups and mark them with an F. So I've got 12 out here and um, four of them have food. So that you can be more advanced with greater distances, more cups. I, I have some clients that'll put cups in multiple rooms of their house. So the dog has to run around in multiple rooms and try and find it. You can put them kind of behind furniture in more hidden spots. So there's lots of variations you can do on this game once they know it. Okay, all right. Puzzle toys. Uh, my favorite ones are by Nita Otison by Outward Hound. These are four of my favorite puzzle toys. Uh, if you look up Outward Hound or Nita Otison, you'll get a link to their website. Pet stores carry these as well. Again, I use dry food for this more than treats. When you're playing these games, you wanna start easy. So if I was doing this brick, this is an older version of this brick toy. The newer version is blue and red. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to put, so this is how it looks assembled. There's all four bones. They have to slide the trays, get the bones out in order to slide the trays. If I'm starting out for the first time, I'm going to fill all the trays, take out the bones, um, put food in some of the trays so they just learn, and maybe even leave a tray half open. So I'm going to start super easy. Again, we want the dogs to have fun. We want this to be a confidence builder. On this lower tray, this lower toy, these pins pull out or lock in um, these things. Um, so I'm gonna start out easy with pulling all the locks out. So err on the side of caution, make it super easy. You want them to be enthused and have fun with it. Okay. Um, dogs have different styles with these puzzle toys. So some are very delicate and very methodical. This is Winston. He's very methodical. He's very gentle. He doesn't tip the toy over ever. I don't even know if he nuzzles it with his nose. So some dogs are more gentle and more methodical. We have Kira. She bites it, she claws at it more heavily. What happens if I dump it all over? Okay, so when you're, when you're um, doing these games with, or if you, if you get one of these puzzle games, absolutely supervise your dog, pick it up, put it away. And again, you can make it easier too. All right, um, target boards. So target board is just anything that you wanna send your dog to. So, um, in this case, um, I, these are pre-made target boards. These are made by Clean Run. They come in different colors. This is a, just a wooden board that's painted yellow. That's a little bit of height. Ideally, you wanted a lighter color than your background. So if you're on grass, you want yellow. If you have dark carpeting, make something at light. If you have white floors, put down you know, red or something darker colored. So it's a contrast. So your dogs can see it and separate it out. I like using more of a target board like this. And this is just painted press board. Um, I like something with a little bit of height outside. You can just use a paper plate, a plastic plate, a Cool Whip lid, something like that as well. Um, I prefer things like this because they don't send a mixed message. I don't necessarily like if there's a plate on the ground that my dogs are like, I can go explore and take stuff off of that. Okay. So with this, this is, will be another group exercise. Start with your dog on a collar or a leash. If they don't know how to wait or stay, put your target just a very short distance away from you, like one to two feet. Put a treat on the target and release them and don't say anything. Um, repeat it a couple times and then you can say target before you release them. Then you gradually build up more distance. And our goal with this is that they'll move away from you to a spot. More advanced version of this could be calling your dog back, doing a sitter down, two people working with two boards. I have a whole list of things that you can do that would be a more advanced version of this. But for today, if you have a target, um, and if you wanna take time to go grab something, a paper plate, a plastic plate, don't use a glass plate or anything breakable. We want something easy. Just We're just gonna set it down, put a treat on it, let them get it, and then start adding the word target, okay? Um, 
So I'll show you, this is just a super short video demoing it. So here's Kira, <coughs> target. So it's really close. And then I'm gonna call her back. If your dog won't do a stay, you can hold their collar or hold their leash. Target, well, I'm not saying anything at this point. Okay, then as they get better, you can increase the distance a little bit. So I'm gonna put it down. This is hilarious, wait for it. <laughs> Winston was in the other room. And here's a, here's a last, another short one. I'm doing distance. So this is Indigo saying, I wanna play this game too. I know how to target. So he walks away, I'm like, good, I'm in the clear. And then, <laughs> sometimes our training sessions don't always go as we planned, right? <laughs> But just going back to the first one. So this is what we'll work on today. Either hold your collar dog by the collar or leash. Just put it out a short distance away. Okay. Um, let me, do we have anybody who wants to practice this and try? Oh, yeah. It looks like a couple people do. So let's go ahead and try this. Okay. So Michelle, I have a question for you. I can Good see girl. like three people. Are there more people playing than this? Good girl. I can only see um let's see. Besides Arnell, there is oops, where did she go? Um uh, it's Mart Ratliff, but that's I, I I can't remember what the person's name is. But okay. Cindy. Cindy, she's right below the person is right below Scotty. Okay, wait for it. Wait, target. Mary, can you try tipping your screen down so we can watch what you and Paisley are doing a little bit? Nice job. All right, nice job. Good job, KP. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I always love it when people train little dogs because so many people don't and they love it. Wait. 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 <laughs> I know that's the hard part. Good no problem solving are now. <laughs> I should I should say that you can pick up your dog too. Wait. Target. 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 Yay! Nice Whoa, job. Maddie. Eat it. Maddie, come. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. That's a new look. All right. Nice job. All right. That's awesome, you guys. Fantastic. All right, so that's a, that's your starting point, but you know you can do. Um, here's just a little bit more <clears throat> advanced, just as a demo. So I'm gonna put the put the treat on the target board. I'm gonna send her to that one, and then while she gets that treat, 
I'm going to call her back to the other board. Okay, so those are that's something else you can do. Um, this is two people back and forth. So if you have two target boards, this is a great way to start to practice recall too and teach your dog to have fun back and forth. I love doing this game outside. So Dave and I are just calling her back and forth and playing target. You can also use a target to teach body awareness. So Kira knows to put her feet on this target. And I'm just doing an exercise called pivot where I'm moving into her space. And you can see her just spinning in a circle. So this is building high net awareness. So those are some more advanced things. All right, just a couple more things. I think we're going to run just a few minutes over. Is that okay, Michelle? So I yes. for a few minutes late. It won't be too much. Um, so this is one of my, this is another favorite toy of mine. It's called a place chase and pull tug toy by Z industries. It's essentially like a giant cat toy. They come in two different sizes on the right. I show both of these. The top one is about like five inches in diameter and the bottom one is three. Um, unless you have a really small dog, I just go ahead and get the bigger one. So you, you have this pole and then you can buy these replacement tugs. Uh, to go with it. Um, this is a great game. Uh, if, if your dog loves to chase, um, a lot of terriers do. A lot of terriers love this dog and any dog that loves to chase. Mm. So it's called, and I put this down, it's V, oh, I have to change that, V, V-E-E -E Enterprises. Um, if you go online and look up chase and pull dog type, you'll pull up a million things. But if you type in V Enterprises chase and pull tug toy, you'll find this toy. So Winston and Kira both love this toy. <laughs> it's helpful if they have a, a nice drop it. <laughs> so you can also mix in some obedience. You can mix in like sit or down. Um, I've read varying articles about some disagreement about doing, especially with terriers, pull things um, that maybe behaviorally that's not a positive thing to do. Or so what's that's your a feeling? great yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm just going to forward through and stop this so it's not such a distraction. Okay, um, there. So I have a couple thoughts on this. This is a game that I would play on carpeting, not on hardwood. So I always play this on a carpeted surfaces so they have better footing. Also, when we're teaching this, I try to keep it low. So you don't want to have the tug toy up so they're jumping and leaping into the air just from a safety standpoint. The other thing I do with this a lot, um, I didn't demo this with Kira. I have a video of Winston where I do. We play a little bit, then I ask them to drop it, then I ask for a sit. Then I play for a little bit, stop, ask them to sit. Um, I have the same rules for tug. So if I'm playing tug with a the dog, they have to sit. Take it means you have my permission to have it. We tug for three to five seconds, then they have to release, do a sit or a down. So um, it's a great question because some people are not in favor of tug or chasing, like it just teaches them to be out of control. But if you keep your session short, if you build a drop it, build some other cues first. Does that make sense? So in this, um, you know, I would have her tug and then ask for a sit and then take it or get it. And then we tug some more. That's how I usually teach it. So you, you have leadership and they're not just learning to be totally out of control. And a prerequisite for this game for me is having a decent drop it. You know, so they're not just grabbing the toy, yanking it out of your hand. And it's just taught them that they can go crazy with the toy. Does that make sense? So you can see, um, like with Kira, with this, she kind of knows this, where she, she'll sometimes actually anticipate and release. So I barely have to put pressure on this, and she gives it up. 
So I should give that caveat that I've already taught her drop it. And she kind of knows this game. I should look and see if I have a video for a first timer. So um, you can another see another time, maybe you could give us uh, uh, instructions on, on drop it training. Absolutely. Yeah, we can do that anytime. So she comes back and I kind of reach for my pocket to pull out a treat and reward her and she immediately drops it. So before you're going to play tug at all, you should have built in drop it um, or, uh, or and I'll use toys to teach drop it too, but we can absolutely do a session where we talk about that. Okay, two more toys, one more toy and then a quick exercise and we'll be done. This is called an indestructible ball. It comes in three different sizes. Um, it is a hard plastic material. So I find that with this toy, either dogs like it or they don't. Some get frustrated because they can't puncture it. They can't really grab it like a soccer ball or a jolly ball type toy. But when they like it, they like it. With my clients, I like to try a couple different sizes because sometimes the little dogs like the big size. And sometimes the big dogs like a smaller size. I'm always surprised at that. But this is a video from a client of mine with her dog. Um, they chose a bigger size because it won't get stuck under their couch. And one of their frustrations with smaller toys is that it's constantly getting under couch or under furniture. And I think she shot this at a little faster speed, but the dogs will... And again, you can use these inside or outside, but the dogs play, they push, they have a great time hurting it. Um, so it's called an indestructible ball and it's just that hard, hard plastic. So you can kind of hear that he can't grab it, but he rolls it around and pushes it around. And I have other videos of this too, but that's a, it's a fun toy for some dogs. And, you know, some dogs, people have to literally, like, put it away. Okay. Last group exercise that we're going to do is touch or teaching a hand target. Um, we're ending this because this is a really fun tr tr trick to teach. A lot of dogs like it, and they learn it very quickly. Um, for an older dog, this would be a really nice thing to teach because it doesn't require much movement or distance. So our goal is to teach their nose to your – or to touch their nose to your hand. Uh, you can use it then in recall or healing work or other tricks, such as teaching a dog to weave through your legs. You can also teach your dog to touch a target stick. Okay. All right. So step one, you're going to take a piece of a treat, just like in this picture, put it between your two fingers, make it a, a bigger piece of a treat. You're going to present the treat at nose level about a foot away from your dog's nose. Don't say anything, but just let them see it and take the treat out of your hand. You're going to do that a couple of times until they're doing it really confidently. Um, then you're going to present your palm, and I'll show you two short videos, just your palm without the treat and say touch. And if they tap their nose, you can give the treat from your other hand. When you start to teach this, you're going to use the same hand as your target hand. All right, so here's a short video. So Dave presents his hand. Kira takes the treat, she's nibbling it. And you'll repeat that as many times as you want, actually. But on average, it's about four times before the dogs kind of get this trick. Then the next step would be presenting your hand. She taps his nose, she gives him a treat. Okay, so one more time, first step. Let him take the treat. Second step, at your hand. Nice. Okay. Um, I, I have an issue with Holly. She can't hear me. Okay. So verbal instructions are, are not working anymore. Yeah. So if she can kind of see her visual cue for you, Scotty, would be the presentation of your hand. I think with the treat because she can still hear and smell, right? Well, she, no, she's losing both her sight and her hearing. Okay. So what I think I would start with, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would start with a really smelly treat. Um, 
just right in front of her nose, really close, and see if she'll just kind of nibble that treat and take it out. And then do you think she could see a hand if you present it in front of her nose? Does she have that much hearing yet? Hearing or sight? Or, I'm sorry, sight? Uh, she can see, she can see motion out of one, one eye. It's cataracts. Okay, so let's just try that. See what she does. So mm -hmm. take a smelly treat, put it like really right in front of her nose so mm -hmm. she can very easily get it. Like it's mm -hmm. right there in front of her nose. And let's see if she'll do that. Okay. And then let's see if she'll do that part first. Or do you, are you pretty confident she will? Yeah, um, we, we do do a trick before bedtime where she follows the treats and I have her wind in and out of my legs, sit and stand and she'll okay. follow the treat. But okay. it's all smell. Okay. So let's try try this as a starting point. And then if she will, then you would present your hand. And if she goes to sniff it, which she might, then you would mm -hmm. reward her with the other hand. So we'll just make it super easy for her okay. and keep the treat really close instead of where we had it with Kira. Terrific. Okay. Terrific. All right. She's, Any other she's she's taking her morning nap, which is why we're not practicing right now. Yeah, that's okay. So, Cindy, does Paisley already know this? Are you? Do you want to try it? Or uh, we started it. We started class last week. We started, but I'll get her. She's always happy to participate. <laughs> Paisley. Yep. Paisley. Sniff, sniff. Good girl. Good girl. And let me say, Scotty, I love that with your senior girl, you're wanting to still keep her engaged and cognitively involved. That's awesome. Sit. Good girl. Sit. Nice. Sit. Oh. Nose. Nose. So, Arnell, does your dog know high? Does your dog know high five? Yeah, but I'm changing it to be with the hand. Yeah. Instead of doing my hand, I usually use my other hand for high five. Okay. I'm so what I, yeah, what I would do is present your hand, if you can, uh, like parallel. And that, that'll cue differently than the high five. So just try holding your hand sideways. Okay. And if she gives you the high five, it's super cute. Don't correct that, but just ignore it. Just try again. And, then so, I'm, and I'm just telling her nose. Instead of give me five, I'm just telling her nose. Good. That's okay. Sit. Yeah, so try sideways and see if she'll do that. I don't know if you can see her or not. Here, sit. Here. Come on. Up, sit. up here. Nose. Good girl. Hi. There you go. Good girl. Sit. I've had to break her treats into slivers. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. So many this morning, she can miss her lunch. For your si yes. her size, yeah, it's like a fingernail sliver for her. Yeah. That's not, uh, I mean, not that you're feeding her fingernail slivers, but that size, it's that small. Yeah. Well, somebody somebody asked me, they go, how much does she eat? I, I said, she eats um, two teaspoons three times a day. I know. It's so much harder with little dogs. I'm lucky she's... Um, Praise motivated. So I can do like all the happy hands, like, yeah. like with deaf people. So she yeah. knows. Good girl. That's awesome. Sit. Wait. All Do right. Yes. Sit. No, you got to sit. So, then, so Cindy, I love what you're doing that you're holding your hand far enough away. And mm -hmm. with Paisley, so Paisley's already started this a little bit, but yes. Cindy's doing a great job of you want to have your hand far enough away that they're clearly make a cho making a choice to come to you when they do this. Nice. Good girl. This is one of the few things we can do yeah. with, that I can do with both dogs in the room. Mm -hmm. Only because they know it. Yeah. Touch. Yes. Yep, and I love, Stephanie, that they've learned that they're both going to turn, but they have to wait their turn. Yes. I love that. Excellent. It's a nice. slow process. It is, but it's really important for them to learn. Yeah. You, that pa patience is a virtue. I did. All right. It helps when they nice. enjoy playing too. It does. 
It really like, does. And I really love teaching this trick because it's easy and dogs, you know, a lot of dogs pick it up really quickly and it's just fun. Okay. And is Scotty still there? Do we know if her, how her dog did, or she may do it later. Yes. All right. Yeah, yes, I'm still here. She's napping right now. Oh, okay. All right. So as you get better with this or as more advanced yes. um, can be both, whoops. You're good. Uh, this is using a hand target for recall. So, uh, whoops, here, go back to, whoops. Okay. Okay. So, Um, so, all right, um, I apparently didn't format this video right, but more advanced versions are using both hands, like Cindy was doing, left and right hand, multiple touches, so you can go touch, 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 um, so maybe touch four or five times. You can also change positions, so it might be high, it might be low, so that's actually, I I didn't format these videos right to play. <laughs> um, so this video was of doing four or five touches. The second one was of doing multiple angles. And then we can use this. Dave's just doing a hand touch as a recall with Kira. So there are different things you can use. Um, we didn't even talk about target sticks. That's like a whole nother bunch of tricks that you can do. Once your dog knows a hand touch, you can teach them to do um, a hand target, but I've used some of this even on healing work and loose leash walk work with my dogs. Okay, so I know we ran we ran a, a few minutes over, about ten minutes later. Sorry about that, but I hope you and your dog. I hope your dog is tired, um, and I hope you had a good time with this. I had a great time watching you guys, and you had some really good questions. Um, I guess I'll open it up. Are there any? Just general questions that anyone has about what we covered today or um, just training and tricks in general? I had one. Okay. I tried inside like modified agility, you know, like instead of the sticks that they weaving sticks, I tried like little short, kind of like you do with the cups because they mm -hmm. had it for little dogs. Um, Madigan will just bowl over the she's it's like I stand there with her come through you know to weave and she just oh. knocks down all the cups and just runs right through the cap, cups and comes and sits and says I did it I, I'm here for my dream I love it so you're trying to teach her to weave through yeah just to kind of give her something to pee a little bit more you know yeah so so what I would start to do with that that's a really good question I think First, I would use something more solid, like maybe like a, either a traffic cone or save some milk jugs and fill them with water okay. and just put, put a milk jug or a half gallon milk jug out, something that'll mark what you want her to go around, but that isn't so easy to tip over. So cones or milk jugs or, um, you know, anything, anything that would be a little bit heavier. Um, you might also space them farther apart. Okay. Weave poles are super hard for dogs to learn. So this is one where you, I would break it into really small pieces. So where you might start with um, just luring her through one and then reward. And you could use a hand target for this too. Okay. And then you kind of come around that one and lure it just as you come around. And okay. then you come around the third one and lure her. So with weave poles, you have to break it into a lot of small pieces for most dogs. Um, you can also offset your cones a little bit or your milk jugs so that visually for her, she can see the other ones. Sometimes okay. that's easier too. But I would okay. just take it into smaller pieces and really use a food lure. And then you can start to have her follow the lure but eliminate the treats. Does that make sense? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because I bought one of those inside small dog agility things. Good. And the cups that came with that, 
So they're supposed to have been like, you know, they could not hurt themselves, but she just decided, she just knocked him out of the way and said, I, I, I'm just coming. Yeah. Yep. So then I think you need to, I would think of what do I have that's, you know, yeah, the I right think size. The milk, I think the milk, the milk gallon things or the half gallon box yeah. things and just put some weight, some stuff inside of it to weight yeah, it down. Put sand in it or just put water in it. And that yeah. way she can't, can't tip it over. Um, that would be cheap and easy. Bigger yeah. um, traffic cones will also work too. Um, another thing that can be done too is people will set up X pens in such a way that the dog has to go through the cones, but that involves, you know, purchasing multiple X pens on yeah. top of what you have. Yeah. So that would be more if you were trying to compete, but be super patient with that because that's hard. That's hard for them to learn, but if she'll I follow a lure, that, following a lure is going to be the key. <laughs> and if you click or train, that would be something that you could click or train too, but really it's going to be coming in, click in the middle, get to the edge of the next one, <clears throat> get to the middle right. of the next one. I would break that and start if you put, start with just like two or three. Okay. Put six things out. That's like, that's a little too mind blowing. Start with two or three and then just build from there. Okay. And someone okay. suggested uh, plungers. If you have a hard floor, that yeah. they wouldn't be able to be knocked over. Sure. Yep, you could do that too. I thought that was great. Yep, that's a great idea too. Um, is yeah, there some place where we can get a heart or make a hard copy of some of your slides for reference? I tried to take notes, but I missed some things. Oh yeah. So, um, Michelle, do you want me to send you a hard copy? Or I know Michelle said this will be available on their website. So you yes. could certainly do a screenshot. Okay. Um, yeah. Are you, are you still, yeah. So I think she said it'll be available on the website and YouTube channel. So okay. you could do some screenshots from there. Okay. Um, or if you want to give me your address, I can print a hard copy and send it to you as well. Oh, that would be great. When every, I'll stay on when everybody else is gone, then I'll give it to you so I don't take their time. Okay. Or, or actually another option would be, and, and this puts the onus on us as the pet owner, is to just get it via email and then you can download it and print it yourself. Yes. Yes, I think that's what you meant, right? Mm -hmm. Give you my email and... Um, yes. Okay. okay. I'll wait until everybody else is done. Yeah. Yep. And then just, I have a resources page here. This lists um, the treats, the toys that I talked about. So this lists all of those um, vendors. And um, going back to um, the question about agility, affordable agility has some really nice um, recreational grade agility obstacles. So they're cheaper than competition grade. Um, you can also make, if you're interested in agility, and I didn't even put that in the slideshow, but that could be like a whole nother presentation. How do you start to teach a dog to jump or do those things? Um, if you're handy with PVC and glue, you can even make your own. Um, on my Facebook page, I made some small cat sized agility jumps for my cat, um, Indigo. <clears throat> so here are the resources and the treats and things we talked about. All right. And I want to thank everybody for participating today. Um, again, thank you for, Mich for Michelle and the Scotty Rally for having me. If you enjoyed this um, and would like to see more of these things, um, you're welcome to donate. They're gladly accepted at DoorCountyScottyRally.org. And they have a donation button right on the homepage of their website. So if you enjoyed this and wanted to help out their efforts to fund research, you know, um, although... Uh, you know, some of the research that the rally, the rally funds is applicable to Scotties, the health issues are universal. So even though the research study may be done on Scotties, the applications are for all dogs. Um, so, yeah. Jody, I wanted to share one other great resource. Um, if people go to swiftpaws.com, they have what's called a flirt pole and mm -hmm. a critter back, critter pack bundle which gives you a little skunk, a little, I don't know, two little animals that I can't tell exactly what they are, but they're at the end of a, of a pole with a line on it, a very durable line, and you can play tug and chase with them with that as well. Yeah, 
Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Michelle. And yeah, the general term, like for the um, chase and pull toy that I showed you guys, that's just one of my favorites. But if you look up flirt pole, um, that's probably the, the most common name for those types of toys. You'll bring up other options for you too. And there are some that even can be anchored in the ground um, that people, if they have, People have dogs that really love those. The dogs can play with themselves. You can get big balls on ropes that you can anchor in the ground so dogs can play with themselves. There's lots of different options on those. So thanks for bringing that up. So, all right, any other questions or comments? All right, well, thank you everybody. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming out. It was wonderful to see your dogs and to see you working with them. And I hope you had a good time and have fun and happy training with all of your dogs. Thank you. Thank oh, you so much, Jody, for another excellent presentation. And I didn't put um, my web, my website is positivedirections.com. Um, and I have a Facebook page, a personal page and a business page as well. So you're certainly welcome to like um, either of those pages or check out my website as well. All right. All right. Have an awesome day. And go pack go. Go pack yes. go. Yeah, for those of us in Wisconsin. We'll be crossing Jody, our fingers. Jody, can I give you my email now? Oh, Thanks, sure. Jody. Great presentation. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed and it. It's so much fun to interact with the dogs with it. Good. Good. I'm and glad you enjoyed that part. And I wanted to set it up so we talked a little and then worked a little just to give the dogs a break. Cause sometimes if you just keep working, working, they shut down and some dogs can keep working for an hour and some dogs really check out. So it's really helpful to work a little bit and then take a break and then we'll come back to something else. Maddie's so, over here waiting for more, more things to do now. <laughs> that's awesome. So I just, yes. Go ahead. Go after after you're finished um saying what you were just gonna say, if you can go ahead and stop the recording. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see. Thank you, Jody. Whoops. Chat. I'm just looking, trying to see where that is. At the bottom I, of at the bottom had, of the screen, yeah. it's like I might have to, buttons over to the right of share screen. New share. Um, I clicked on start video, but I don't think that was right, was it? It's down where oh, it's you're, you're recording. recording. So if you go to the very bottom where the toolbar is, it'll be about four buttons over from shares from a chat. It's not easy to find because it's just a plain white color I, like everything else. No, and I don't have anything on the bottom of my screen now. No, it's not on the bottom of your screen. It'll be at the bottom of your toolbar at the very bottom. <laughs> All right, so I'm pausing my screen share. I see mute. Active speaker, hide video. So I have a, a toolbar at the top, but nothing on the bottom. Oh, well, then, it, then it'll be at the top. I have start video. And then do you have That's, a stop video? Yeah, I, I stopped the video. Okay, but you've got to go to where it says record and then stop right. recording. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not seeing anything that says record. I I hovered over the green bar at the bottom and a toolbar popped up at that point. Oh, okay. Let's see. Because it wasn't there at the start. Yeah. So now I see. Okay. That happened. So there's a video icon. The video icon will be basically your, um, you know, our ability to see you. It's the stop recording that you want. So you want okay. to go to record and probably press yeah. that and stop that. All right. So I'm going to. 
Okay, so I had to actually take my slideshow off. So now I can pause it. Um, 